I just click live. Let's roll with it. 29th day, <laughs> show and go. The the day after the Australia's first footy companion, Ice, you're on there last night. You had a, sunk a couple of bloke in a bar. How you feeling? <laughs> yeah, no, I actually feel all right. Eh? I was six beers on the dot. Like, that was the perfect spot for me. Um, glad I only had two slices of the pizza as well. So, no, it was fun. It was fun. Um, obviously, it needs probably a little bit more structure around it. But in saying that, like, within the chaos, um, I'm sure there's some entertaining, like, content in there but like, probably the hard thing is it's because obviously like Ren's a confidence speaker like I'm a confidence speaker Denon's fucking Denon yeah, and scopes the scope you know what I mean so um, you can see, you can sort of see why when I was thinking about it this morning you can see why they sort of have like a Lukey Stowe on the show and go or Yvonne Sampson on the on like the main tally because otherwise it just gets like fucking half chaotic and everyone just starts talking so um, it, it, yeah it was fun and it was great to have footy back and power of fucking too good what was it like at home, Jackson? You were in the living room, had the the laptop and the and the TV going. What was it like? Yeah, it was sick, man. Like I, I get FOMO all the time when you boys run around the office vlogging, but that was like that was next level. I was like I was actually just filthy the whole time that I wasn't there. So um, it was cool, man. Like I was I was just saying to Luke off air, I was like I was like I, like I love the fight companion, but I never watch like watch Joe Rogan fight companion and the fights live because I just want to watch the fucking fights and then I listen to it just like a standard podcast. Mm. and kind of get their reaction afterwards so i was planning on doing that with you boys but obviously i was like oh first one like i'll watch it live and i was bouncing back and forth like i'd mute you cunts when you were banging on like and i wanted to watch the footy and then after five minutes i get bored of the footy and i mute the footy and go back to you guys and then by the end of it i was basically just watching you guys <laughs> like i missed the last two tries and I, I was thinking maybe like you said before like oh you want a little bit more of like your boys sort of talking about the footy but like you think about those tries paris scored they were pretty much just structured you know, they, they create numbers, Moses or Dill Brown to put someone through a hole. Like, there wasn't big, exciting moments for you boys all to get up for. So, the chat was actually more interesting than the game. Just, just it happened to be that sort of game. Like, it wasn't like you were getting 100-meter intercepts or field goals in the last minute or anything like that. It was basically a clinic from para. Yeah, um, we, we, we sort of, and I talked to you boys about this before, we sort of touched on, like, once it gets into that sort of good ball zone, like, within the 30, like, do we sort of switch our attention to a little bit more of that style and, like, sort of potentially, like, you know, Tony Romo um, sort of, like, preempts shape and, and um, types of plays, and then when they pull off, it's kind of, like, that cool little moment because you can see it coming. I feel like there's definitely enough ability within the room to sort of talk up these sort of types of moments. And, like, I've watched enough footy in my life and been around enough good coaches just to understand what teams are actually trying to do there. So, and you sort of talked about this being a completely separate show, and I know it's hard to get um, NRL, like, use the licensee and stuff like that but fuck, it, it'd be sure. it'd be a great it'd be a great show man I've, I've talked about it before and like i actually wanted to call the show shape and like um and like just get get someone in say like a uh, cory norman or adam reynolds like guys that actually live around me cody walker get them in and like talk about the types of shapes and what they were thinking coming up here because i really enjoy that sort of style of content especially especially um like like say NFL, like I know nothing about NFL, but when they when they when they walk up and they talk about how many people were in the fucking pocket, whatever, right, I find that so interesting, eh? So mm. I think everyone else probably understands footy right now. So as as, a, as that type, that high level type. Part of it though, like this is where I was saying this morning is like I disagree a little bit. Is like fuck, there was beauty in all of you guys just fucking hooking it into the pizzas and talking absolute yeah. shit. Like I think you can get the analytics stuff, not on that level. Like I think there's a space for that. The reason I said separate show is like Rin's like. He was like the full comata of that table. So like you boys would all be gabbering on. And then like when Ren would speak, you'd all shut up. It was actually pretty fucking cool. <laughs> and he's smart, man. So when, when you and Ren were going, talking about the, the actual shape and what players were trying to do, it was like, it was real interesting. And then you get fucking Scope and Kempi chiming in with whatever they were chiming in. <laughs> and he was saying some random stuff. Eh? I was like, what? what? Well, all right, well, we'll at the Stick same shape. Wing, he was a bit of a giggle anyway. He had some like, highlights, um, man. Off the back of that game, fuck, I thought Dylan Brown was kind of special. Like, I don't know. Oh. I, I think... I think the wing. we've seen him walk out. Yeah, the wing walking out, the blonde hair, the dapping up everyone before he goes out, rolling out last, like shit like that. So he caught my attention straight away. So I, I don't know if it's almost like uh, I'll keep like looking out for him because he was doing that stuff at the start and sort of wanted him to kill. But like he, he looked nice, bro. He looked nice. Did you see his Instagram story after the game? It's him walking on Suncourt with the, he's just eating a magnum and he's like, see you guys. And then just <laughs> shuts it off as fucking all time. Was that before the game or after? No, after. So it's him walking on the grass on the way out of the stadium. He's just hooking into a magnum. Sick. Yeah. Hey, Love no, it. it wasn't just it wasn't just you, mate. I thought, I mean, if you know, I, I saw you boys were giving out your sort of three two ones and all the boys. Like Gutho did have a great game. I thought Gutho and, yeah, and Gutho Sean was Lane nice, in particular were all time. Good but numbers. that was a lot of that was moving left. Um, fuck Sean Lane, man. The Warriors. Ugh, still hurts. Um, but 
I thought Dylan Brown was the man of the match, bro. Like, even even not even with the ball, like the cum was tackling fucking everything that moved and like whacking him and Moses like for halves. Like I don't, like Ben Hunt for me is one of the best defensive halves in terms of like putting shots on. Like Benny Hunt gets under boys and, and whacks him, but Moses and Dylan Brown, bro, they don't fucking miss. And even Mitchell Moses, who's fucking sixty kilos dripping wet, basically Luke Stone Essex, like he gets up out of the line and puts his body in front of him. Man, I was so impressed by both of them defensively. Obviously, we know they're gifted on attack. But Dylan Brown covering fucking Katoni in that, like, unreal, that's man. Good little battle like between jo- them too. I think mm. it, I think it's a bit of a Joey um, trait that he tries to incorporate into halves because I know when he was sort of working with Fozzie and and DCE, he was big on. Like, I talked about it last night, like big on them, like not only chasing their own kicks, but like putting that um, your body on the line in the next one, and and you sort of tick on it. And like you look at someone like DCE and someone like Mitch Moses, like they're not going to strike fair in you when you're running at them, but they're still very good defenders now. And like you know what I mean, so they get up and get their tackles done. But I think that's a bit of a Joey trait. And Ren was talking about it all the time last night. He goes, oh, that's got Joey written all over it. The early tackle, yeah. especially after a try. Because that's like, um, usually when you're in the armory, so going back and forth, back and forth. And everyone always says, get to a kick the next one. But like how you actually structure that set, super important as well. And if you look back to uh, Broncos 2015, when they were flying, humming, all they'd do is get to the red line and their whole back line outside of the right would be shaped up and McCulloch would just pop out and just bang it. And just mm-hmm. everyone just sprints down and you just gang up on everyone and just pretty much just waiting there with baseball bats to smash all the back three. Joey's um Joey's the one like he's on the record I'm not you know breaking anything he always says like whenever he was in a big game or anything like that straight away his first thought was get into the game through my defense if I get up off the line and I start even if he's getting brushed like if I start making hard contact it gets you and you'd be able to know bro like getting into the game defensively gets you into the game offensively because then you you're aware of the contact like if you go out there straight away and you start trying to pull strings and focus on your kicking and like all that from the jump it can sometimes you know, it can be a bit hard to get into. I would know. I played suburbs under 85. So, um, <laughs> but like when dudes are getting off the line and whacking like that, it's hard. Even Sean, he talks about it. Sean's like, every time he feels like he's in a bit of a lull or whatever, he'll shoot up out of the line and try and, you know, feel that contact. So, yeah, yeah. and everyone, every, every coach says, like, get a touch early. But you're right. Like, the coaches do say that. Like, but build your game off the back of your defense. And Ivan was big on it. And like, it is hard yeah. when you're half because you've got so many fucking things to worry about. You're yeah. worrying about kicking. You're worrying about shape. Once you get to this point, we're running the shape. You're worrying about, like, fucking like, – you're worrying about everyone else. But, like, it, it does matter. Once you start tackling, once you start jamming people and stuff like that, you get a bit more confidence in your attack. And you can tell when a half is in form when they're running the ball. You can tell when they're not at, when they're out of form, when they pass, 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 come like fucking Lonzo Ball. And they, like, you know, you just know that they're going to pass, you know what I mean? So, ben Simmons. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, bro. When, you, when you're on and you're confident, bro, you're running and the game sort of slows down. Like, and that's, that was Dylan Brown, like the first five minutes, he had like two or three carries and like they were good carries too. Had shape mm-hmm. around him, like he's got enough options to like sort of look left, look right, do all that sort of shit. But his thing is his run. And it's easy to turn a, a, a runner into a passer and then a passer into a runner. So, Thanks. so yeah, so that, that past is going to come and he's going to start seeing that. And if you watch him, if he catches the, like whenever he catches the ball wide here, his first movement squares straight back up. So they call it playing north, south or upstream or different coaches have different things for it. But wherever the goalposts are, he's always going like straight up the field. He spoke about that on your podcast, eh? When, he, when you uh, kind of asked him, like he kind of didn't say much when you asked him about Joe, but he said the one yeah, thing he was focusing on was, um, yeah. focusing on was eyes and hips, eh? He's like, as soon as I get the ball, I'm going to square up. Eyes and hips square up. And then from there, I can decide whether I want to, play long, play short, go myself, inside, like, so he, his first fucking thing in his head is get square. Once he's square, then he makes a decision, but, you know, Mitchell Moses is a little bit, Mitchell Moses is a little bit different, like, he's very good on on a wide four. Yeah. So it's like four on four, and he sort of seen it last night, and I sort of touched on it, and the boys are kind of disagreeing, but fuck, that was as wide a four as you can get, and Mitchell, because he's got pace, and he can gash you, once you're at the four man, or you're the back row, you just go, fuck, 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 is he going to step me? Because as a forward, they hate getting stepped by halves, it's like, but as a half, it's like, like you don't get it bumped off and fended. Like getting stepped by a forward, like that's like the most embarrassing thing for them. So they start to think about that. So they start getting on their haunches a little bit. He gets the ace, skips across, play short. And that was that was like the chess match all day. He was giving Milford fits, man. Like Milf didn't, and Milf's not a bad defender. Like I know people give Milf shit because you know whatever. But Milf, like he can read a defense. It's his tackling's you know another conversation. But he was just because because of that little skip and speed that Mitch has off the Mitch, like he's my mate. That Moses has off his like off the mark. You know he was getting Milf to turn turn in, turn out, like do whatever he fucking wanted. And Madison was just punching holes all day, man. Whether Madison was getting an arm free or not, like. He was finding his front every single time. He's a low-key fucking great pickup for them, man. Well, not that low-key. I know it's big hype, but fuck, man. That, I thought Para 
you know, you mentioned it on the companion as well. Like, even though they, they started the year well, there was a little bit of sort of razzle-dazzle. Like, they were always trying the big play, always trying to step everyone. Gutho's, you know, trying to chip and chase for Gutho. But, like, fucking last night, man, that was a goddamn clinic against a fucking huge pack as well. <laughs> And and the thing about it is like their shape come all, all pretty much all to the left as well. So like if you if you're looking at a like if you get onto Tuesday video and you're looking at a Parramatta side, probably Mitch Moses is, is it up there at the top. You know what I mean? Like if we can shut down Mitch or we can limit his opportunities, we've got a good chance of beating Para. Like he and Hoss sort of touched on it last night. He's probably got that maturity about him now where he's happy to just sit on his edge. And if the shape if the if the shape isn't going his way throw it back the other way. I don't think you could have said that about him a couple of years ago. He wanted like more touches and stuff like that, but they're just quality now. They're quality onto the toe. His kicking is fucking spot on. And when it, when it does come time and he does have that X factor and they got shape running both sides of the field, fucking they're going to be a good side. They already, they already are a good side, but they're going to be even better. You watch the footy, man. What are you talking about? See? No, I mean, just watch too much footy in my life. Understand what's going on. <laughs> Did you like it, Lukey? Your, team, your boys got up. Boys got up. I thought it was a good game. I didn't, like I said, if you, if you go back and watch through the video, I'm actually on the laptop just like chatting in the group <laughs> chat, keeping everyone engaged and stuff. And I need to watch the highlights of it's it working, again today. Eh? Putting a shift in, it was good. Um, NBA Luke, stuff, guys. Luke. Have you. Sorry? Sorry, sorry. Sorry, bro. Go. No, I was just going to try and lead into some NBA chat, maybe. Like, there's been a little bit come out that they might be getting back soon. Have you been keeping tabs on that, Jackson? Yeah, I like, I'm barely ball as podcast boy, of course. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, look, it, the NRL is like, I, I'm throwing it back to the footy again because, it, you know, you guys mentioned it on the broadcast that Fox were running over in the US. Like, this is, now everyone sees, okay, the UFC is back, the Bundesliga is back. Did you like the pronunciation there? Bundesliga. Um, and the NRL is back now. So there's going to be, you know, particularly sports like the NBA who have bottomless pits of cash. They're like, oh, fuck, well, they can do it. You know, obviously the virus is a lot worse in the States and they've got to deal with a lot more people and all that. But logistically, you can play professional sports now. Like that's what the NRL and the UFC and all these things have shown. So a sport like the NBA, which is super progressive and super on top of everything like that, fuck, they'll be back in no time, man. I hope they roll straight into finals. I know it'll sort of fuck the Pelicans more than anyone um, with them having the easier schedule, Memphis having the worst and Memphis sitting eight and them sitting nine. Um, so like that'll be shit because you want to see Zion like rookie year get a bit of playoff experience. They'll get brushed, but you know one or two games would be sick for him. Um, but I'd rather them see roll straight. You want to see Jar? Man. You want to see Jar in there as well, though. Yeah, that's the thing. So I mean, the Memphis deserve to get knocked out. Like it's so it, it's hard. It's a hard one to figure out. Like, but I wouldn't be stalling the whole league because of the Pelicans Memphis situation. Like in reality, who of them is gonna win the fucking? title like mm-hmm. none of them they're not going to get close like and if zion's your big ticket like your big box office ticket i suppose there's an argument there to play the rest of the season and try and get him in but i, I wouldn't be i saw damian what are you talking about on first take and he's like the risk with not going straight to finals is you're playing more basketball which means you're having a longer competition and the longer the competition the higher the risk is that something goes wrong you know like whether someone catches it or there's a fucking outbreak in new orleans or whatever so he's like just shorten it as much as possible which is straight into the finals like, we'll all get hyped about it. The boys will be rolling back in there in their suits that LeBron buys them. So, as much as, like, I was buzzing that footy's back, I fuck, I can't wait for the NBA, man. What's the talk on Disneyland? I've seen a bit of Dis. They're playing at Disney World. Yeah, they that's want to try- they're- So, they'll yeah, just have the one stadium and just hmm. have, like, a... Like a- the love almost, like the summer, the almost like the summer league, bro, when they, when they go to Vegas yeah. and that. And it's all yeah. sort of at one stadium, bro. Look, that- like, fuck... <laughs> Just renting out Disneyland for a giggle, you know what I mean? Like that's, that's sort of level. <laughs> that's why I said bottomless, right? bottomless fucking pocket. <laughs> but it just makes sense, though, doesn't it? Like, hmm. it put everyone into one place, and like everyone's been living with their families anyway. So, what, what's the harm of like the boys are on enough money over there? Get the families and shit over there as well. Keep yeah. all the boys happy, and obviously, if you got the boys happy, they're they're playing better basketball, better product, all that sort of shit. So, Th- yeah, I'll that's fuck- what I was thinking with the NRL. Sorry, bro. That's what I was thinking with the NRL. Like. Why didn't they? I'm, I'm hardly gonna uh, bag old Pete because he's now my Lord and Savior, Pete of Landis. But like, why didn't they look at like the Warriors are now based permanently in Australia? Why didn't they look at basing Canberra, Melbourne, North Queensland, Brisbane, all in Sydney as well, and doing the Bank West, like you know, do it across three grounds there? Like, well, surely that limits the risk and the travel thing. Like, listening to Josh Hodgson, I don't know if you saw him on the Maddie Johns show. Last yeah. night, did you catch that, Luki? They were talking about it on the Matty Johns podcast, how much of a disadvantage oh, right. it is for the Raiders because they've got a three-hour trip regardless no, for every game. 
they're bussing. Like, is it, is it day of, day of the game? Day of, day yeah. in, day out, bussing. So, like, and Hodgson was talking about last night because they were talking about the rule changes, which I'm sure we'll get into as well. But, like, he was talking about how, you know, taxing the NRL is on the body before this. Like, you saw the game last night, how fucking quick it was. That's going to be every game now with the six again thing, mm. even though they kind of missed a couple. But he's like, we're going to have battered and bruised bodies in week fucking 10, 11, getting on a bus and sitting with your knees up on your shoulders for three hours. Like, Man, it's going to be tough. Like, Canberra and Melbourne, man. Like, the Warriors, obviously, it, it goes without saying. They're away from home, and they're going to have to do the travel as well. It's going to be fucked. But, like, let's be honest. Like, teams like Melbourne and Canberra, who you kind of expect to be right there at the end, have been hugely disadvantaged by this, man. If, if the Roosters were favourites before all this, fuck me dead. I'll be putting the house on them now. And Yeah. Oh, yeah. I guess it's week in, week out. I was just thinking, like, um, but then people have to travel down to Canberra as well. So I think they're going to sort of Ricky Shaw build that mentality of, of like, fuck, they're coming down. Like, they want to treat us like this. Fuck, uh, let's no, because they're not like that as well. They're not playing at Canberra Stadium. They're playing at oh, Campbelltown. Oh, none at Canberra Town, ever. So they, oh, they're not. Yeah, okay, they've brushed Canberra okay, Stadium. Sorry. That's the issue. But Amy Park's still running. That's the weird thing. So why yeah. go to Melbourne but not Canberra? Mm-hmm. I. I yeah. Melbourne be Melbourne, baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I should have. Goes without saying, eh? Yeah. Well, how did Get you find the organizations ch- they run the ship? How did you find the rule changes, Jackson? Because we were always, we were in the chat and then we're like, oh, shit, was that another six again? Like, because we had it muted. We weren't hearing the commentary of what they were yeah. saying. How many, it sort of happened pretty early on from what we could see. Like, that's how Parramatta got that first try. Yeah, it happened about two minutes in. Um, it almost half looked like the, like Brisbane sort of forgot that it was a thing. So Brisbane were kind of on the back foot on that third tackle. And I think it was Haas or someone kind of like blatantly laying in the tackle. Like clearly early on, they're like, fuck, we're on the back foot, you know, push back. But it was it was interesting, man. Like, they definitely missed one. Like he blew a penalty, which I don't know. I'm going to have to brush up on my rules apparently. Like there must be a red zone thing where teams can opt to take it for field position. So take the penalty or six again. But it happened so hands quick. I don't know. Hands in the rough. Was that a hands in the yeah, rough play? Yeah, but, but laying in there as well is six again. So I'm, I'm not entirely sure. But look, it fucking quickened the game up, man. It really quickened the game up, which is why, see how I managed to steer everything back to the Warriors, which is how um, I thought the Dragons selection was interesting, not taking Bully on the bench, the second hooker. Fuck, man, you're going to need two hookers in this day and age now because unless you've got Damian Cook, they're, they're going to be doing so much running, man. You even saw like Reed, um, is it Mahoney? Marnie. His last name? Marnie. It's spelt Mahoney though. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Throwing me off. Um, he was skipping out, like, he wasn't running, but he was skipping out on every fucking play because there's so much space now. Because the six again thing, they just roll, 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 roll. And on top of that, Mitchell Moses is getting repeat sets for a fucking laugh. Mm. So, yeah. it was intense, man. It's going to be like that. Like, there used to be a rule, like, marker down, everyone, like, run. So, when there's ever one marker, fuck, that's your cue to go. But now that's going to happen so, so much more often. Someone's going to have, have to come up with a new fucking trigger point. And, like, obviously, it's someone like Damian Cook, but I, I think it's just going to be all through the middle. Because usually yeah. what they just try and tighten up, and you don't want to let anyone through your middle. So, um, I, I from from that very fucking brief thing I've seen it, I actually enjoyed it. You know what I mean? Like, um, yeah. like like we sort of touched on on before, like these defensive systems where markers first marker always goes open side, um, second marker always goes blind side, and what that does, it right. can actually really deter your fucking defensive line now, especially on your good ball. I like when you're defending your try line. So when you're defending your try line, you want people next to you that you can trust. And the reason why Milford turned in because he probably didn't trust his four man on that Mitch Moses play because that's the only reason Harvard turned in. Car- like, Carrigan or someone, eh? Like it wasn't. Yeah, he's a middle, he's a middle too. Yeah. yeah. So like, only reason he's turning in is like, fuck, like I'm gonna, I'm gonna get done here. I'm gonna get done here. It's hard to stay square and, and like you're under fatigue and everything's happening so quick. So. Um, yeah, I think it's going to create a lot more opportunities like that. I feel like there's going to be a lot more of those types of tries where um, probably about two years ago, like, how the fuck did that get through? Like, mm. You know, sometimes you watch Super League and you're like, fuck, that looks like the easiest try in the world. <laughs> like, just Blake Austin just tearing everyone up over yeah. there. But I feel like those types of tries are going to come back because it's going to be more attack orientated, which is, which is a good thing. Like, like it, we, talk, we used to talk about this in football, like, like someone like Michael Luck who'd make fucking 70 tackles. Or, I think he made like 75 tackles against Melbourne one time. And, and, and then right you get there. someone who, who misses fucking six tackles but can score two tries and they get paid probably six times more than him. Like, like people just want to see attack. It's just the way it is. But, uh, the purists appreciate defense and, and coaches get a stiffy like, fuck, look at us turning away. Fuck, look, we won the arm wrestle. But if you're a fan, you, you want to see attack. You, you can appreciate the defense, you, hits. you don't like yeah. defense. You like Tafua. Yeah. Like Tafua can be the worst defensive winger in the NRL, but if he whacks, everyone like loves him. But yeah, I think yeah. like on your point, like that pushing through the middle, you know who it's going to fucking benefit is fullbacks like Chans and Gutho and the, the on-ball fullbacks who sniff around. So you've got guys like Trebojevic and Teddy who play out the back of shape and like fucking carve teams apart. But 
Like, Chan sniffs around every single fucking hit up. Gutho is always around the ruck looking, looking, looking. Like, Roger used to do that, but it's kind of been coached out of him. Another conversation for another day. But those fullbacks that come pushing through the middle at fucking speed are going to be, they're going to be running riot, man. Like, I think you're going to see guys like Kalen and that have to potentially adjust their game slightly if the game starts to get way more direct. I, the one I really would have wanted to see, um, besides Api is is um, Manasi finding from Manly. Because I reckon Manly, they're probably the best support team in the comp. Like, whenever yeah. there's a line break, Cherry Evans never misses. Troy Boyevich never misses. Even Jakey's always there. They've just got a great read and great feel of the game, you know what I mean? And, and you've got Adam Fanua Blake and Marty Tapao who can offload. And like, do you know what I mean? I think, I think Manly are going to be the big beneficiaries of that. Walker, he, he, he can see the game pretty well and he's got fucking speed to burn. So we're interested to see Manly over these next couple of weeks. When is um when is Manasi back? Is he back or no? Nah, he's doing his he's doing his um court case by whispers behind the scenes. It's like someone's half throwing him under the bus and yeah, I don't know. The media well, sort yeah. of grabbed the story and stuff like that. So um yeah, I can't, I'm I'm only speculating here as well, but um because he's a gunner. Gun. That's that's why they kind of were not happy. You're never happy, but when Uppy left, they were like. We'll be right. Yeah, <laughs> but Uppy's like Uppy. Uppy's worth that, and he's showing yeah. that he's worth that. And you got this young kid coming through; they can do a similar job, and you can pay him for cheaper. You're going to bring him in, yeah. you know what I mean? So, and then especially when you got to you got you got to top up your Trebojeviches and those brothers, like they they ask for right, more, and they deserve more. Um, it, there's a balance, man. You can't fit everyone in. Well, it should be a good weekend it. tonight, boys. You got the Cowboys, Titans, Roosters, Rabbitohs kicking it off for Friday night footy. I reckon that's where we wrap it up. It's been a good show. What's and the, go. um, What's the early game on Saturday, bro? Uh, the Warriors Dragons. Dragons. Oh, sweet, yeah. So Up the norms. Yeah. Fuck the norms. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go, Cody. Yeah. All righty, boys. I'll chat to you after. Sweet, peace.